the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends, I would like to welcome you to the 11th day of the Grace and Favor Conference. I read from Psalm 102 verses 13. You will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time has come. I prophesy into your dimensions that the Lord will arise and have mercy on you, you listening to me. For the time to favor you, the set time to favor you has come. Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So my dear friends, let's continue to pray for our intentions. The various areas of your life that you need the, the mercy, the favor and the grace of God. Let's join our hearts and minds together as we pray for your intentions. Today, I would like us to begin to look at the principles that you can use to activate favor in your life. So the first principle that you can use to activate grace and favor in your life. Under this principle, there are three subheadings. So stay with me as we discuss and go through these principles and ask the Holy Spirit to grant us the graces that we need to keep to these principles. The first subheading under the first principle to activate favor in your life is strategic prayer and fasting. My dear friends, we are essentially spirits. And God is a master spirit. God therefore has the ability to reach out to any human spirit. And if their hearts are hardened, like Pharaoh, you can trust that like it happened to Pharaoh, God will send plagues after them and make them uncomfortable in their spirits so they say yes to God's yes. Because we are essentially spirit and we are coming from God who is our source, he can place into the spirit of anyone the desire to help you. And even if the person is proving stubborn like Pharaoh, just be persistent in prayer. God Almighty knows how to shift things to your advantage. And that is what prayer does. Strategic prayer and fasting. My dear friends, prayer is not a problem-solving tool. That is where we've gotten it wrong. Prayer is not a problem-solving tool. Most of us wait until we are in trouble, then we begin to pray. Prayer is not a problem-solving tool. Take it from the Spirit of the Lord that is speaking through my voice. Prayer is not a problem-solving tool. Prayer is about relationship. It's about connection with the divine. That is what prayer does. So it is based on this relationship and this connection that your problems will be solved. Not necessarily prayer. That is why some of you, your prayers are not being answered because you are using prayer as a problem solving tool. You wait until you are in trouble, then you pray. If you are not in trouble, you don't pray. And if you don't pray, you don't have any connection with God. And if you don't have any connection with God, what is the bridge that you will ride on to bring solution to your problems? That is why St. Paul will encourage us to pray without season. Prayer is supposed to be an everyday thing. It's not a problem solving tool. It's about connection and relationship. And based on that connection and relationship, if you get into trouble and you call on God, He will come to your aid because of the connection and the relationship that you have with Him. So that's what prayer is supposed to be doing. But we have turned prayer into a problem solving tool. Praying must be done in and out of season. Prayer is about connection and relationship with God. So. If, if you have that connection and that relationship with God, because of your constant connection with God through prayer, God can say to someone, God can speak to the heart of someone, get up and go and help my son or my daughter. So because of your constant connection with God, someone that you have not heard from can call you and tell you, I had a dream about you, I want to help you, how can I help you? Because of your connection, your constant connection with God through prayer, God can talk to a person's spirit and, and tell the person to go and be partner with you or be partner with another company or an, or an enterprise or a ministry or a business or a person. Because of your constant connection with God, God will grant you favor and favor will give you speed, divine speed as I call it. So something that can take someone 24 years, you will do it in 6 weeks. Look, hear me when I tell you that favor is his battles. Favor will fight your battles and favor will give you rest. Many of us have no favor. Look, let me tell you something. Eh? When you find favor 
before a person eh? regardless of what your limitations are the person will favor you and and you must know that you have a, a role to play for activating the flow of favor in your life lack of favor is one of the reasons for hardship some of us are gifted we are talented we are, we are hard working but there is no operation of favor in our lives we have teachers, we have architects, we have business persons, we have nurses, we have pastors, we have doctors, we have engineers, we have students, we have students who are gifted but no favor. I know people who know everybody, they, they know every important personality in town. If you check their phone logs, you see all the contacts of the movers and the shakers, but they have no favor. Look, to be gifted is not enough, oh, you need favor. And the only way to accelerate, the only way to have that quantum leap and success in your life is through favor. So Lamentations chapter 3 verse 22 to 23 will say, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions faileth not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. So God daily loads us with benefit. His mercies are new every morning. Do you really think you can have a joyful life with your salary? How much is your salary? Do you really think you can have a joyful life doing it by your strength? How much is your strength? Access to favor is the key. See him. That is why it is difficult to justify and glorify God when you kill yourself producing your own results. So why are you struggling when there is assistance, when you can sweat less and have more triumph? And I'm telling you there is such a possibility. And, and, and it is part of the reason why we find it difficult to give God the glory and help one another because we struggle for everything. And once you struggle for everything, you always count the cost. When it is time to give out, you count the cost. So you don't want to give out. Listen when I tell you, that all quantum leap testimonies are related to favor. Favor can be assessed. Like the way you can walk into a banking hall to assess their services. I'm telling you favor can be assessed. So it means that who likes you matters. Who likes you matters. Who likes you from the spiritual realms matters. And who likes you from these physical realms also matters. Who likes you from these physical realms. I'm talking about godly people who want to change your life. Not one who wants to sleep with you or wants you to do some illegality not one who want, not one who wants to take bribe before giving you a job i'm talking about who likes you matters the same way who hates you also matters so if you are not careful you may be a serious christian but you have so many pharaohs your boss can even be a pharaoh he will hate you so much that you not try so scattered across scripture are people who were favored Go to Daniel chapter 6 verse 14 when he was thrown into the lion's den. We are told that when the king heard this, he was greatly distressed and he was determined to rescue Daniel and he made every effort until sundown. A king liked Daniel so he couldn't sleep. If a king likes you and the king cannot sleep, can you imagine the advantages, the systems of advantages you enjoy in these realms? You go to Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 4. Another king like Nehemiah. Nehemiah prayed to the God of heaven. And he went to the king and the king granted him his request gave him all the advantages he needed to go and build the city somebody who likes you can fight for you will fight your enemies will fight when people want to take what is rightfully yours look just one correct person can open a hundred doors of opportunities for you favor is a gate you can assess it and there are things you can do that will bring you favor and i'm telling you that the first one the strategic prayer and fasting under the first principle to activate favor the second one is aligning yourself with covenants that god already has with men and women of god look let me tell you something everything you are looking for god has already blessed people with that dimension name whatever you are looking for healing breakthrough deliverance whatever whatever it is that you are looking for god has already blessed people who have walked this earth with that dimension and the easiest way to assess spiritual graces is to align yourself with covenant that god has with men and women of god it's the easiest way to assess spiritual graces you align yourself with covenant that god has with men and women of god and this is where impartation comes in look sometimes we take some of these things for granted impartation has to do with the giving and the receiving of spiritual gifts spiritual blessings spiritual breakthroughs and spiritual healing and spiritual impartation can be positive or negative it can be received in different ways it can be received by association spiritual impartation can be received by looking 
spiritual impartation can be received by touching by just being in the presence of the anointed or the unanointed by giving to the anointed or giving to people who need it by laying on of hands by the spoken word by decree or proclamation by prophetic utterance through service these are some of the ways that spiritual impartation can be can be passed down to you and i'm talking about impartation from the career of that anointing in other words you align yourself with covenants that god has with people or systems and tap into the anointing it is the easiest way to assess spiritual graces by aligning yourself with the covenant that god has made with some humans you can position yourself to participate and share in the dimensions of grace that operated in their lives or operate in their lives there is something known there is something known as the communion of saints the catholics know it very well they have a saint for everything they have a saint whatever you are looking for they have a saint for it simply means that that particular person has been blessed so much with a spiritual mystery there is so much of that system of grace on that person that if you align yourself with that saint or that holy person it's likely you get what you want it's a spiritual mystery i'm sharing with you a deep spiritual mystery let me explain something. If your dad is President Nana Kufuado, the current president of Ghana, will you not by all means benefit from his position as a president, won't you? Aha! Uh-huh. The same way God has made covenants with some human beings. Abraham, for instance, God made a covenant with him. So if you align yourself with the Abrahamic covenant, you can partake in that blessing. Why do you think we sometimes say God of Elijah? God of Isaac, God of Samuel. It is because we know that God has a covenant with these holy people. So by mentioning their names and by faith, by using faith to align yourself, you share in their impartation. Why do you think that Catholics like to make a big deal when it comes to Mary? It's not just because of Mary. It is because Mary has this mystery. She has a system of grace and favor on her to the extent that when the angel came, one of the first things that the angel will say will say will be hail, full of grace. When it comes to grace, she has it in its fullness. She's an epitome of that mystery. So if you are looking for favor and grace and you align yourself with her in faith, God will grant you your request. Not because of you, but because of the covenant that God has with her. And I'm telling you that if you check through the human history, the human work with God, God has selected certain humans. He has selected certain humans and he has bestowed on them graces that you are looking for. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. Align yourself with those people. Align yourself with the covenant that God has with those people and see miracles come down for you. There are people who have cured cancer. Are you aware? They walk the face of this earth. God used them to cure cancer. If you are looking for healing from, from cancer, align yourself to one of those people. There are people who have prayed for women who were barren and they got their children. If you are looking for a child, look for those people. Align yourself with them. It doesn't mean you should go and look for them. Whatever. But I'm talking about this. What I'm teaching you is a spiritual principle. You align yourself with the covenant that God has with them. When it comes to dreams, for instance, God has a covenant with Joseph and Daniel. So if you want a solution to a dream, you can align yourself with the covenant that God had with these men. It's as simple as saying, back with faith God. The covenant that you had with Joseph that he was able to interpret dreams. I'm tapping into that covenant. I need a little bit of that. That is all. Back with faith. You see what will happen in your life. Look, the point I'm making is this. Whether you like it or not, God has favored and anointed certain men and women of God. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. If you are in trouble, look for someone that has that particular grace and align yourself with the covenant that God has with a person. Say your prayers and like flash, your answers will come. I know what I'm talking about. So let me give you an example of an aligning covenant prayer. Let me give you an example. Dear Lord, I thank you for the mystery of divine grace and favor. You favored people like Abraham. You favored people like Joseph. You favored people like the Israelites. You favored people like Daniel. You favored people like Mary. Mary who carried in her frame the completeness of this mystery of grace and favor. I hereby tap into the prophetic and align myself by the power of the Holy Spirit to this dimension of grace and favor you poured on these people. 
I align myself with the covenant that you had with them. Let me participate in the blessings associated with the mystery of grace and favor. I make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. And back with faith, you see what will happen to you. So this is an example of an aligning covenant prayer. My dear friends, let us repent from all of our iniquities, weep for our transgressions, and have a renewal of mind and heart. Let's repent and pray like Nehemiah did and ask the Lord to allow his ear to be attentive to our prayers. Let's ask the Lord to delight in us and let us ask the Lord to prosper us and give us success today and beyond by granting us favor in the presence of men and women. Amen. Now the third level, as far as the first principle of activating favor is concerned, is obeying God's commands. Look, God has placed principles and commands in the universe. And just by obeying those principles, you will reap the results. Obeying God's commands brings favor. Just obeying God's commands brings favor. That is why Psalm 1 verses 1 to 3 will say, Blessed is the man that walketh not to the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And he meditates on the law of the Lord day and night. And because his delight is in the law of the Lord, and he meditates on the law of the Lord day and night, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. He will bring forth fruit in and out of season. His leaves shall not wither. And whatever he or she does, that person will prosper. So my dear friends, we have started talking about the various principles that you can use to activate favor. And today we've started talking about the first principle. And I, I'm saying that as far as the first principle is concerned, there are three subheadings. One, strategic prayer and fasting. Two, aligning yourself with covenants that God already has with his holy people, men and women who have walked the face of this earth. And then three, obeying God's commands. May the Lord continue to show us his favor. And grant us all the graces that we need. Have a prayerful day. Shalom. And God bless you.